Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called Jesus Can Give Us Good Emotions. It's like our good emotions come as a gift from Jesus if we choose to believe in his truth and obey him. Satan tries to tell us that our good emotions come from trusting in ourselves or trying to experience physical pleasure with the creation or something. It doesn't make people very happy or peaceful doing that. We need a spiritual kind of peace, a perfect peace, a fullness of joy, a spiritual joy, and an awesome love that can blow our minds. For the joy set before Jesus on the cross... He endured the suffering of it. I was the joy that he was dying for on the cross. That's how much he loves me. Dying on the cross for me. Take my sins away. He was taking the punishment for me, so I don't have to be punished. Give me his righteousness. So it's about what you want to choose to believe. Satan's lies leads to bad emotions. Not believing Jesus' truth, not obeying Jesus. Believe in Jesus' truth leads to good emotions. Believe in Jesus' truth, obeying Jesus, Jesus rewarding you with Holy Spirit, love, joy, and peace. Hearing Jesus say, well done, Rod. Obeying Jesus is basically hearing his voice in prayer, asking him what to do. What do you want to do now, Jesus? And he wants to live in your body and do good things out through it. Not Rod doing things through me, Jesus doing things through me. Like Paul said, it's no longer I live, it's Jesus who lives through me. Jesus can handle a rat infested prison and write the New Testament letters through Paul. Jesus can do what he wants me to do in this kind of an evil suffering world today in 2020. So, it's like if you choose to believe Jesus is truth, like Jesus is real, Jesus is here. Jesus can make me happy now. Jesus is my perfect protector and provider. He is more than a trillionaire. He's like my perfect husband. It says in the Bible that God rejoices over his people like a bridegroom rejoices over the bride. If we could only understand the truth about Jesus... That we don't have to try to do things ourselves. We're supposed to let Jesus do it through us. Trust in Jesus' wisdom and muscles and money, not ours. Trust in Jesus to take good care of us like sheep or something for our lifetime. And it's like he's got our day of death picked out. And it's like he's right there to help us through it. <laughs> Somebody was saying the other day that... Uh, it was like they had a vision or something of somebody like being martyred, whether it was going to a guillotine or something. Or like Stephen or something. They were talking about Stephen being stoned to death. And it's like they felt like Jesus said to them or gave them a vision of Stephen in Jesus' arms looking down at being stoned, like already in the presence of Jesus, and he's still on earth a bit in his body, but it's not harming him being stoned to death. It's like we could be taken to the guillotines under the Noahide laws, and we wouldn't even feel it. I've had a vision like that where somebody came up and slipped my throat, and it didn't bother me. I was happy. Jesus was helping me through death. So it's not like a surprise or something. No, it's like they got it on the date. Rod's going to die on this day. The angels, Jesus, are all ready to watch it or something or help me through it. And it's, you got to believe that Jesus controls everything. You can't trust Jesus unless you believe he controls everything. But it's like we're in a spiritual war and Satan doesn't want us to believe in any truth about Jesus. And that's not going to lead to any good emotions. He doesn't want us obeying Jesus. That's going to not lead to Jesus giving us good emotions spiritually. But if we let Jesus teach us the truth, like he said, the truth will set you free. Free from fear, free from depression, free from anger. 
I found what I'm looking for. I found Jesus. I'm happy. I'm not angry because I can't buy something at a store or something. Can't try to find my happiness Satan's wrong way through sin or something. Like a prodigal son in Vegas or a rich man going to hell. So you have to believe Jesus is perfect. Jesus controls everything. Jesus is here. It's like uh, Jesus said to me the other day, uh, You can have an awesome time with me or something. And uh, we can. Jesus is awesome. If we want to be friends with him, we have an awesome time with him. He can tell us what to do. He can give us the power to do it. He can make us happy doing it. It's like a motto I got. I got to live in an evil and suffering world. <laughs> but Jesus can help me through it. Bring good out of it for me, like a Joseph experience. Make me happy in it. Then help me not to be bothered by it. No, Satan, I don't have to be bothered by it. Jesus is here. It's like you're always saying, Jesus, how do you want me to think about this evil and suffering going on around me? Get his understanding or his way of thinking about it. It's like asking Jesus in prayer, if you like wisdom, ask God for it. He'll give it to you. Jesus, show me how awesome you are. And get a revelation back like John on the Isle of Patmos revelation. Then you'll be able to worship him more when you understand the truth about how awesome he is with you. How awesome his love is. It's greater than the universe. How awesome his death on the cross was for you to take your sins away so you can go to paradise forever and be his bride. Sometimes I think of heaven like uh, going to Tahiti with a trillion dollars and your perfect husband or something forever. Jesus is coming back to make a new heaven and a new earth and it's going to be him being the leader of it, not Satan being the leader of it, like it seems to be today. The world is such an evil and suffering place because people want to listen to Satan like Adam and Eve or Sodom and Gomorrah or something like that and destroy themselves like the days of Noah or something. No, we don't want to believe in Jesus. No, we don't want to be his friend. Well, they're not going to find much happiness following Satan like a prodigal son in Vegas or a rich man going to hell. And it's like, you got to believe that your perfect bodyguards are with you. I don't care what's on the TV set or what's going on in the world. It could be World War III. I don't care. I got the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the angels, my bodyguards, perfect bodyguards with me at all times. Saints just a creation. Jesus just has to say, one angel, go get a chain, put it on Satan and throw him in the lake of fire forever. Satan ain't a, a problem for Jesus. He's a problem for human beings who want to listen to him. You want to follow Satan, you'll go to hell with Satan. It's like the world can have this great technology and use it as evil against us. Computers and Wi-Fi signals and poisonous medicine or something. Poisonous food. But Jesus' technology is a thousand times more powerful. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. They give me poison and a vaccine that doesn't have to harm me. Jesus can feed me for 40 years in the desert if the government wants to take our food away or something. I always went with Jesus. It's like thinking that uh, Jesus could help a two-year-old through the tribulation. No problem. He could take care of me through the tribulation. No problem. Jesus could just speak a word and feed 5,000 people right now. Jesus could raise me from the dead if I die. Paul's in rat infested prison. He said, be joyful always and rejoice in the Lord always. And it's not me doing it. It's Jesus doing it through me. That's what we got to believe. It's like in the Bible, this one prophet prayed for this other prophet to have his eyes open to see all the spiritual warriors around him protecting him. There was a human wicked army like the satanic world empire today. But there was also an angelic army around. There's only so many demons, and they're just creations and stuff like that. And one, there's two-thirds of the angels of God on our side or whatever. It's like Jesus talking to the Roman leader or something. You would have no power over me unless God granted it to you from heaven. I could just call down a thousand angels now, and all your men would turn to dust. That's what you got to believe. 
Who's this living inside me? Jesus, the king of the universe. You're like a superman with a super god living inside you. It's like a Moses fighting this demon-controlled pharaoh or something, trying to enslave and slaughter everybody. So that's a bit what it's like today with an antichrist world or something. People want to vote for Satan, and he, they want to make him the leader of the world. <laughs> and it gets very evil and suffering, but it doesn't have to bother you, because Jesus is with you. Jesus controls it all. It's like a vision I had. I was sitting on a park bench talking to Jesus. I asked him the question, what does the future look like, Jesus? He said, economic collapse, famine, rioting, apostasy in the church in World War III. And I thought, oh, that doesn't sound like such a good future. Then I got this vision of me dancing with Jesus around World War III and people getting shot with tanks and everything. And I'm looking at Jesus, what's going on here? And Jesus just looks at me and he says, don't let a body a rod. I control this. You've got to believe that. No matter what chaos is going on, Jesus controls it. Pharaoh chasing Moses to the Red Sea. God controls it. Joseph in the prison. God controls it. Daniel in the prison. God controls it. Paul in the prison. John in the prison. God controls it. And he's trying to work it out for their good. Jesus is saying something like, why are you so fearful in a boat during a storm? I control this. You don't have to drown today, guys. That's the way we have to see it. If we ever want to have get good emotions from Jesus, i got to believe Jesus is real. But I feel the spiritual love, joy, and peace, so I know he's real. I've seen demons cast out or people healed who were sick miraculously. I've seen people responding to salvation messages with salvation down in Honduras in, in poor countries or whatever. I haven't seen a lot of that up here in a, more of a rich man going to hell Canada, but I've seen it down in poor countries like Honduras with whole groups like praying and stuff like that with Jesus with them. There's a supernatural power that comes in and the demons blinding people's minds to the truth could come off. So the future would look like I think a few people might have some kind of a revival experience. Maybe start doing church in the, like the Book of Acts at homes, more miracles happening. The, the more difficult things get, like World War III starting up, the more God might do miraculous things to bring his people together and pray and help each other out. We may not have seen a lot of miracles yet or something, but like I said, when Satan comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard against him like Moses at the Red Sea. So we got to believe Jesus is with us. Jesus' technology is a thousand times more powerful than Satan's. Jesus controls it all. Jesus can fill you with a fullness of joy and perfect peace and awesome love, good emotions. Rewards for, oh, you want to leave my truth, Rod. Oh, you want to let me do good, loving, suffering things through your body, Rod. Here's some joy. Here's some peace. Here's some love fulfillment or something. It's not about buying stuff in stores with money and experiencing physical pleasures like a prodigal son in Vegas to be happy. So this is like a Job experience we're going through now. It's like everything's being taken away from people. Hopefully, if they reach out and they find Jesus, they can find that he's everything they need to be happy. He's everything they need to handle this tribulation or something. So, that's how we get good emotions from Jesus. We believe the truth. He wants to teach us. He's real. He's all-powerful. He's in control. He can give you Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace to fulfill you. And we're in a spiritual war of Satan, but we don't have to believe his lies. So whatever Jesus is telling us, I'm real. Satan says, Jesus ain't real. Jesus is saying, I'm here. Satan said, no, he's not here. Or Satan's big line, oh, it's such an evil and suffering world. How could Jesus be good? Well, if you understood, when you get to heaven, you'll say it's all worth it. I, nobody deserved to be alive and breathing here on earth. But if you wanted to get saved, you could have got saved, or whatever, or can get saved. If you want to believe in Jesus, you can. If you don't want to believe in Jesus, you can. 
type thing. And it'll show by your emotions, fear, not trusting Jesus, depression, not getting any spiritual joy, anger, still have a vow, you're looking for to be happy. Thing, the things you uh, try to find your happiness in, idols and created things, making you angry because you can't get them anymore. And uh, then when you get to heaven, it's like uh, Jesus will be the king of it or something like that. And there'll be no more evil governments or Satan or anything like that. So that's how you get good emotions from Jesus. You believe his truth, read the Bible, let him teach you truth, believe in it. Do what his voice is telling you to do, suffering love activities for the kingdom of God. Then he'll reward you in heaven with suffering love rewards. When you let Jesus do suffering love things through you, then he greatly rewards you for it, especially if they persecute you and stuff like that, in heaven forever. So that's a bit about Jesus can give us good emotions.